A very common question that I get from new to Linux users is what do they need to do after installing Linux? Say you install your very first Linux distribution. You pick a distribution, you install it. Now what? You know, what are some of the things you should do immediately after install? Now, of course, everyone could answer this question differently because everyone has a different use case. But today I wanted to cover five things that I almost always do right after installing a new Linux distribution. The very first thing you should do, and it doesn't matter which distribution you install, right after installation, run and update. So here in Ubuntu, for example, you would open the software center, uh, or you could do it at the terminal too if you knew the commands to run in the terminal. But if you're brand new to Linux, you probably don't know the commands but you could open the software center. You could go down here to manage and you can see manage updates, check for updates. And you can see I've only got a couple of things to update, but I could choose update all and it will update all the packages on the system. I'm going to decline taking that update. Most new user friendly Linux distributions that come with a proper desktop environment, most of them are going to have GUI package managers and, and GUI software centers that typically they're going to have one button you click. It'll be a button that says update the system or you're a check for updates, whatever it happens to be. It's a one button thing and you need to do that. And the reason is there could be important security updates. For example, there could have been kernel updates. There could have been important security updates to your web browser that have happened since that distribution release the ISO that you installed. So always update the system immediately after installation. The second thing I always do immediately after installation is I install all the necessary proprietary drivers, proprietary multimedia codecs, proprietary fonts. Now the great thing with some of these really new user friendly Linux distributions, especially the ones that are really popular for desktop Linux, so things like Ubuntu and Linux Mint and Manjaro, a lot of these distributions already ship this kind of stuff out of the box but if they don't then you need to go and actually install these things yourself now the great thing about Ubuntu is if for some reason you didn't get those things installed during the installation process they have additional drivers this program here look for that and it will check and see if there are any proprietary drivers needed for your graphics card. So if you're an NVIDIA user, for example, you need the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. If you have a, a Wi-Fi chip that needs a proprietary driver, it'll check for that. And this tool, all it does, it runs a quick search. Now, in this case, because I'm in a virtual machine, all the drivers are open source, so it couldn't find any proprietary drivers that are needed in this VM. But on physical hardware, it may have found something. And then you just you know, hit apply changes or install or whatever, hit the button, right? And then it just installs those drivers for you. It makes it real simple. And what I just showed you in Ubuntu is it's that simple and other really popular desktop distributions like Linux Mint and Manjaro and many others. I also mentioned proprietary multimedia codecs and proprietary fonts, especially the Microsoft fonts, because if you don't have those, a lot of web pages won't look right. Most desktop Linux distributions these days do ship proprietary codecs and proprietary fonts out of the box. When I first started in Linux, many of them did not because they were afraid that there could be legal issues with that. Now, if you install a Linux distribution that doesn't ship that stuff out of the box, many minimal distributions, uh, command line installation, uh, distributions like Arch Linux and Gentoo, they're not going to ship those proprietary codecs and fonts out of the box, but you can install them. One of the easiest ways to get multimedia codecs is to install a multimedia player that has those built into it. So install VLC, for example. When you install VLC, it will pull down all the multimedia codecs uh, that VLC needs to play all your uh, audio and video formats, Blu-ray, and things like that. Now, to get the Microsoft Core fonts, you need to search for ttf dash uh, in Ubuntu, it's MS Core Fonts, all one word. I, if I search for it, uh, it really doesn't return what I'm looking for. I think it's TTF MS Core Fonts dash installer. Yeah, the Graphical Software Center does not list that, so you would have to install this in the terminal. So in Ubuntu, Control Alt T would bring up a terminal. And in Ubuntu, you would do a sudo apt install name of package. So ttf ms core fonts installer. Give it your sudo password, and you can see it's going to install that package. It asks you to agree to the Microsoft end user license agreement because obviously these Microsoft fonts are Microsoft software. Do you agree to the EULA? Yes, I do. And then it 
installs the fonts. So all your typical fonts like Arial and you know, Georgia and Comic Sans and all of that stuff. And you really need those installed because so much of the World Wide Web assumes everybody's using Windows, everybody has the Microsoft font. So you want those installed. Otherwise, some websites you go to just won't look quite right. So after updating the system and after installing the proprietary drivers, codecs, and fonts, the third thing I want to do after installation is I want to disable any startup applications that I'm not going Going to use because out of the box many Linux distributions they have uh, auto starting programs so when you log in you'll be greeted with a welcome screen for example you know I don't want to see that maybe I want to see it the very first time I log in but I want to disable it after that or maybe they have a drop down terminal application that auto starts or maybe they have a wallpaper changing application that auto starts you'll see stuff sitting in your sys tray certain applications that auto launch in the sys tray and a lot of times I want to get rid of that. There's a couple of ways to get rid of this. There is using a graphical tool, which if you're using GNOME, GNOME has this really neat graphical tool called GNOME Tweaks. So if it's not already installed, install it. Again, it's called GNOME Tweaks. Now Ubuntu does not have this tool installed out of the box. I installed it myself, but when you launch GNOME Tweaks, you have this category for startup applications, and you can see Ubuntu really doesn't have any of those annoying startup applications. Very good for Ubuntu. Now, if you don't have something that's a graphical tool to remove the auto start programs, you could go into the file manager. So open your file manager and go into dot config and then look for an auto start directory now ubuntu doesn't even have an auto start directory but normally there would be a folder here called auto start and then inside that directory you would see desktop applications you would see files with program names and those program names would be the applications that auto start i can actually show you this on my arco linux installation so this is arco linux and if i go into dot config slash auto start you can see on my arco linux installation i have one program set to automatically launch on startup and that is nextcloud the fourth thing I want to do right after a new Linux installation is I want to install some new package managers because most Linux distributions, they only have their native package manager that ships out of the box. So in Debian and Ubuntu, you have the apt package manager. In Fedora, you have DNF. In OpenSUSE, you have Zipper. In Arch Linux, you have Pac-Man. But you know, sometimes you want to install programs that are not packaged in those native formats for those native package managers. Sometimes you want to go and get, for example, pieces of proprietary software that your distribution doesn't actually have in its native repos, but do exist in things like snaps. Flat packs, app images. So for me, I like using all of these package formats. I don't mind using any of them. So I just go ahead and make sure that they're enabled out of the box on my distribution. So here in Arco Linux, you know, most Arch Linux based distributions are not going to have snaps and flat packs already installed and enabled. So how you would do this is you would do a sudo pacman dash capital S to install. Snapd would install Snapd, which is the snap daemon, the snap server. Or you could also install Flatpak or you can install both which is what I do because I often install packages as both snaps or flat packs you know depending if they're packaged as one or the other I, I really don't care for ideological reasons I really don't care what the software is packaged as long as I get the software that I need and where snaps and flat packs really come in handy is again proprietary software so we're talking about software that's not open source software so proprietary software uh, things like discord Zoom, Spotify, applications like that, typically you're going to have to go grab those as something like a snap or a flat pack. Most of the time, that's not going to be packaged in the native package manager for your distribution. And the fifth and final thing I want to mention is, you know, after an installation, it's almost always necessary to add and remove software. So rarely are you going to install a distribution and it installs all the programs you want to use. And typically most of them are going to install a bunch of programs that you don't ever plan on using. So you're going to have to add and remove some software, especially the things you use every day. For example, for me, I always know that I'm going to want a particular browser that I like to use, a particular terminal emulator 
editor that I like to use. I'm going to install a text editor that I like to use and then certain other applications. For example, LibreOffice. If you need an office suite, make sure you install that. Are you a gamer? If so, you probably want to install Steam. I don't think Steam is installed out of the box here on Ubuntu, for example. I would have to go and install that. LibreOffice is here. My favorite terminal emulator is Alacrity. It is not installed out of the box because GNOME defaults to the GNOME terminal, for example. My favorite text editor is Emacs. I would have to install that. You know, you, you do have to spend a few minutes, maybe, you know, half an hour or so, removing the programs you don't want to use and then installing some of the programs that you do want to use. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. And of course, I'm talking about Matt James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Vador, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tin Room, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons. Without these guys, this quick video about five things I like to do right after installing Linux, this video wouldn't have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. Without these guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. If you like my videos and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.